Hello and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today I want to talk about the most popular languages according to some metric, but more than the languages themselves, I'm going to talk about who designed them, where they're from, and when these languages are from, because to me history and ge geography are as interesting as anything else. Those are terribly interesting topics to me. The languages I'm going to use are based on this GitHub 2.0. This is one of the sources for programming language popularity that I went over on my programming language popularity video. And I'm going to specifically be using the metric of number of pushes doing, during Q3 of 2019 uh, on GitHub. This is going to be for public repositories. And this sort of fits a lot of my own biases. And I also like this list of languages, which is part of why I've used it. Um, anybody's going to project their own biases into something, and this includes some of mine. But I think these are relatively easily um, defensible languages as being among the most popular out there in the world. I couldn't possibly start, stop at 10 like most people do. In fact, I feel bad stopping at 20 because there's so many cool languages past the level 20 here, but I got to stop somewhere. I'm going to be showing this map and discussing it more when we're done. But first, let's go through the languages themselves. Number one. We have JavaScript, a.k.a. ECMAScript, a.k.a. JS, a.k.a. ES. It was originally released in 1995, designed by Brendan Eich, who is from Pennsylvania, U.S. Number two, we have Python, released originally in 1990, 1991, designed by Guido Van Rossum, who is from Netherlands. Number three, we have Java. Released originally in 1995, designed by James Gosling, who was from Alberta, Canada. Number four, we have C++. Released originally in 1985, designed by Bjorn Strustrup, who is from Denmark. Number five, we have PHP. Released originally in 1995 again. We're going to see this early to mid 90s is a very peak time period for popular languages today. Designed originally by Rasmus Lerdorf, who was from Kekertarswak, Greenland, also grew up in Denmark and Canada. Uh, number six is Go, released originally in 2009, designed by Robert Griesemer, Rob Pike, and Ken Thompson. They've all been given equal credit. Here they are. Uh, Griesemer is from Switzerland. Pike is from Canada. And Thompson is from Louisiana, US. Number seven, we have C Sharp, released originally in 2000, designed by Anders Heilsberg, who is from Denmark. Number eight, we have TypeScript which was released in 2012 and also by Anders Heilsberg. Number nine, we have Shell. Now this one I'll have to pause and talk a little bit on because it's a little bit awkward. Uh, the GitHub category for language is just Shell. Now there's lots of shells out there, which basically is a user interface for interacting with an operating system. Uh, usually in reference to say a Unix-based operating system these days, uh, now, there's lots of shells out there. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on the Born shell, which replaced the Thompson shell, Thompson, who is from the Go programming language. Anyway, the Born shell is sort of the common default shell in POSIX standard and also is the basis for the design of shells Bash and ZSH, which came out about 10 years later. Born Shell, or SH, came out, as we use it today, came out in 1979, designed by Stephen Born. Again, Bash and ZSH from about 10 years later, which are the common default shells in various flavors of Unix. Uh, Stephen Born is sort of a hard guy to pin down because he's got a really common name. This is the right Stephen Born, and this is the wrong Stephen Born. And anyway, uh, Born, the guy we're talking about, is from UK originally. Number 10 is Ruby, released in 1995 again. We've seen that year before, haven't we? Designed by Yukihiro Matsumoto, a.k.a. Mats. He is from Osaka Prefecture, Japan. Number 11, The Venerable C. It was released originally in 1972, designed by Dennis Ritchie, who is from New York, U.S., he is the only language designer on the list today that is no longer with us. Number 12, 
Scala, released originally in 2004. This language is originally designed also to work on the Java virtual machine. So it's Java language, JVM language number two, designed by Martin Odersky, who is from Germany. Number 13, Swift. This is designed at Apple, released in 2014. This is the, most, the newest language on our list, designed by Chris Latner of LLVM fame also. He is American. I, the best I could track him down to was University of Portland uh, for his bachelor's degree. He may or may not be from the Oregon area. I'm not sure. Number 14, Rust. This was released originally in 2010 and originally designed by Graydon Hoare. Graydon Hoare actually now works for Apple on the Swift programming language. Uh, Hoare is also a very tricky guy to track down. I found that he's originally from Toronto, Canada area. Uh, not easy to, to pin down guy though. Number 15, uh, Kotlin. Uh, released originally in 2011, designed by Andre Breslov and others at JetBrains. Uh, the best I could track down Breslov is to his bachelor's degree in St. Petersburg starting in 2001. Number 16, Pearl. Released originally in 1987 and designed by Larry Wall, who is from California, U.S. Number 17, is Objective-C. This is the language that Apple designed Swift to replace. Objective-C uh, is from 1984 originally, designed by Tom Love and Brad Cox. Uh, Brad Cox is from Georgia, US. And Tom Love, the best I could track him down to was his PhD work in the 1970s in Seattle, Washington. I'm not sure where he's from before that. Number 18. Groovy. This was sort of uh, bringing Ruby type flavor originally to the Java virtual machines. This is JVM language number three. Uh, this is originally from 2003, des designed by James Strachan, who is from the UK. Number 19, we have Lua. This was released originally in 1993, designed by Roberto Yerusalemsky, Valda Marcellus, and Luis Enrique G. Figueiredo. I don't really know Portuguese. That's my good try. Um, anyway, here we have these guys. Uh, Yerusalemsky may be from the Rio de Janeiro area. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Celis and Figueredo, the same. Uh, they may be from Rio. The earliest I can track them down is to Rio and their academic work there. This is also one of our few academic languages along with Scala. And our number 20, R. Uh, the statistical language R. This was released originally in 1993, designed by Ross Ihaka and Robert Gentleman. Here we are with them. And Ihaka is from New Zealand and Gentleman is from Canada, possibly British Columbia area. That's the earliest I can track him down. Anyway, so now that we have this list here for the top 20, according to the metric I chose earlier, here they are on a map. The blue points here are people and where they're from. And the red is the companies and or organizations that have promoted and or supported and or where these languages started at. We notice here there's a very heavy concentration in North America and Europe for these designers. And there's still a fair amount of geographic diversity and native language diversity among these people. There's definitely a lot of native English speakers, but definitely a lot of non-native English speakers as well. Uh, interesting also, we take away the who list, the people, we lose some of our geographic diversity for company headquarters um, versus what we have when we include the people themselves and where they're from. So we do have some diversity here, uh, although there's plenty of socio-demographic and geographic uh, groups not represented. We do have uh, two languages from the Southern Hemisphere. We have Lua and R, and we have uh, two languages from Far East, which are Ruby and R, where R is our Southeast winner. Um, but beyond that, we're mostly in, again, in Europe and North America, which is somewhat interesting. But again, there's definitely some ling language, native language diversity of those who design these languages, these programming languages. Now, this is interesting to me because there are non-English-based programming languages out there. But all these languages, even Ruby, which is designed by a native Japanese speaker, all the keywords in these languages are based in English. 
And so to me, that's interesting that English-based keywords are so popular on this list, even from people who come from either not very English or very non-English native languages. And to me, represent to some extent the way the world works today in terms of international things often do happen in the English language. Though again, there are plenty of languages out there that either don't have much keywords to begin with or are based in languages other than English. And even these languages also, most of them support things like you know Unicode identifiers. You can really write the language to some extent outside of the keywords in any language you want. Um, and before we're done, also, I want to talk a little about statistics. I love statistics. Now, these are histograms up top here. And histograms are semi-arbitrary. Wherever you divide up the bins makes a huge difference what a histogram looks like. So I just divided these up on decades. Here I have on the left here the designer age at the initial release of their language. And what you see here is that it's very common for these popular languages to have been designed by people who were in their 30s at the time of release. Um, or possibly older. Now it's interesting, our 120 something was Rasmus Lerdorf of PHP and our 60 something was Ken Thompson of Go. And, uh, but most people are in the middle. And again, the thirties is a very popular age for programming language designer uh, release date. Language age itself seems like a flatter histogram. It could again be a, an, uh, an artifact of where the bins are. But we notice that it's relatively flatter compared to the designer age. Uh, but with this lump in the 20 to 30 year old languages. And this is again, we saw those, those languages from mid to early 90s released. And we see them here on the scatter plot as well. In this scatter plot, I did a y axis of that uh, percentage of pushes during Q3 of 2019 from our uh, GitHub statistics from the GitHub website. And uh, I was curious if there was any kind of obvious correlation here. I don't see any obvious correlation between age of language and the popularity of it. Except again, that just we happen to have this lump here in the 20 to 30 age uh, range of popular languages. And I'm not sure if that means anything or not, but I, I find it interesting still. Um, anyway, back to our original list here. Obviously, this list can vary a lot depending on what you're looking at. And this is, again is based entirely on public repositories at GitHub. This is based on things that change from quarter to quarter. I find it interesting to see the dynamics of these things. If I looked at pushes, that's one thing. If I look at stars or issues or pull requests, I get different uh, lists here. And these will possibly give you different meanings. And I chose pushes because I like the list of languages there. However, had I chosen, say, pull requests or some other uh, um, metric, I might have gotten different languages such as Elixir or DM or VimScript. And again, like I already said, if I go past the 20 range, like to the you know top 30 or top 40 languages, there's still very important and interesting languages in those areas that I just don't have them to cover in a single video. But they're terribly interesting and we'll only look at them in the future. Also, I hope to look at some of these languages in depth in their history. I did do a video on the history of C Sharp and I want to do others in the future as well. But again, all that's for the future. Bye, y'all.